Today we're going to use Flutter to build a clock, and not just any ordinary clock, but a binary clock. Just a few days ago, the Flutter team launched a new competition where the goal is to build the most beautiful clock face. I don't plan on entering this competition myself, so this video is more of a quick start guide to get you started building your own clock from scratch. As you'll see in a few minutes, building a clock in Flutter is really easy. So in order to make this video a little more challenging, I also want to teach you everything you didn't know about binary. And if you're entering the Flutter clock competition, make sure to watch until the end of the video because I'll be sharing additional clock ideas there that you're more than welcome to steal from me. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can grab the full source code from Fireship.io. In order to build a binary clock, we need to know a little bit about how binary works. In mathematics, a binary number is just a number that has two possible states, which we can represent as a 0 or a 1. You can think of this logically as true or false, or electronically as on-off. And in computer systems, we call a single binary value a bit. Now, a single bit by itself can't represent very much, just two values to be precise. So how do we make bits represent more complex data? Well, we simply combine them together. When you combine bits together, it creates a geometric series, where the number of different values we can represent is determined by 2 to the power of the number of bits that we have. So 2 to the power of 1 equals 2, which means we can represent two things. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so we can represent four things with two bits. But when talking about bits, we usually think about them grouped in series of 8, which is a single byte. A byte would be 2 to the power of 8, which can represent 256 different things. Now, the reason we call 8 bits a byte is somewhat arbitrary. It's just a good even number and contains enough space for all the letters of the alphabet in uppercase and lowercase. For example, you may have heard of UTF-8, which stands for 8-bit Unicode Transformation Format. It encodes millions of different characters from languages around the world, including emojis, and does so by combining 1 to 4 8-bit bytes together. So whenever you use Unicode characters in your code, which is all the time, each character is actually encoded to a binary value, and the computer uses that value to look in this giant table to figure out which character to actually show in the screen or the UI. In fact, here's a cool little trick you can do in your Dart code. Start with a string, and then grab its actual character code from the UTF-8 table by calling code unit at a given index in that string. That will give you a base 10 decimal by default. If you want to convert it to binary, call to radix string with a base of 2. Radix is just another name for base, so it's taking the original base 10 number that we normally use and converting it to a base 2 binary value. So that's how binary works at a high level, but how do we actually use the ones and zeros to represent more complex data? Like, how do we use binary to tell time? You can see we have six columns on the clock, where each column is used to represent a digit in time. Blue shows the hours, green the minutes, and pink the seconds. The large, colorful numbers represent the time in digits that you would be familiar with. And you'll see our flutter clock is synced up with the actual device clock. Now each one of the cells, or the intersection between a row and a column, represents a bit. Notice how inside of every cell we have a number. This is the actual value that that bit represents. So the bottom row represents 1s, the second row represents 2s, third row 4s, and the top row 8s. If none of the cells are highlighted, then it represents a 0. If there's just a single cell highlighted, then you can assume that it represents that number. But if you have multiple cells highlighted, then you get the value by adding them together. For example, if we look at the first column, we don't have any bits highlighted, so that means it's a 0. If we go to the next column, we have an 8 and a 1 highlighted. Add those together, and you get 9. Continue that process for all of the other columns, and that's how you read a binary clock. You'll notice that some of the columns have 4 rows, but others only have 2 or 3. You'll notice the column with 4 rows represents the 1's position for hours, minutes, and seconds. We need 4 bits for these columns because their value can range from 0 to 9. And 4 bits allows us to represent 16 different values. But when it comes to seconds and minutes, we only need to represent 6 values because a clock can only go up to 60 seconds or 60 minutes. And we can represent 6 values with 3 bits. And when it comes to hours, there's only 24 hours in a day, which means we only need to represent a 0, 1, or a 2, which we can do with 2 bits. So now that you know how a binary clock works, let's go ahead and build one from scratch with Flutter. Let's go ahead and get started from a new Flutter project. If you're entering the competition, you can clone the repo from the contest homepage. We do have one dependency for our app, INTL, so we'll go ahead and add that to the PubSpec YAML. It's used for date formatting and localization of timestamps, which tends to be pretty useful if you're building a clock. Inside the main.dart file, we'll go ahead and import dart async, dart math, and then we'll use system crumb and device orientation from the Flutter services package. The competition requires that the app is in landscape mode, so in our main function, we'll go ahead and use System Chrome to set the preferred orientations to landscape left or landscape right. 
Then moving down to the app itself, we have a material app with some basic theme data. And then we have a scaffold whose body is the clock stateful widget. So the entire app will basically be coded inside of this stateful widget that we're giving a name of clock. The first thing we'll want to do is make our clock tick every second. We'll set up a property name now, which is equal to datetime.now. This is actually the only state that we have on the widget. And the state will change every second for every tick of the clock. We can set that up during the init state lifecycle hook, where we set up a periodic timer with a duration of one second. That gives us a callback function where we'll call set state to update the now value. Now, because we're building a binary clock, I'm going to abstract some of the logic into my own custom class called binary time. This will take the logic of converting a timestamp to binary outside of the widget, which will make it a little easier to maintain and hopefully easier to read. What we actually want here for our UI is an array of strings, where each string represents the ones and zeros needed to display a given column in the clock. We'll call that list binary integers, and when this class is instantiated, we'll grab the timestamp, and then we'll convert that timestamp to the hour, minute, second format. Now, by default, the hours, minutes, and seconds will be separated by a colon, which we don't need, and we can get rid of the colons by using replace all with an empty string. That will give us a string with a length of six. And then we'll map each element first to an integer, then to a radix string with a radix or base of two. If you remember earlier, we talked about how binary values have a base of two. Radix is just another name for the base. So what it's doing is taking this integer and converting it to a string of ones and zeros. I'd recommend playing around with this a little bit on Dartpad. For example, you can take an integer and convert it to a radix string with a given base, or you can convert a string back to an integer by passing in a radix argument of two. So unless you're some kind of psychopath who understands how to convert base 10 to base two, I'd recommend playing around with this a little bit. The last thing I'm going to do is pad each of the binary integers with zeros on the left side if they don't exist. This just makes them easier to loop over when we get to the UI. And also, to make our UI code a little more readable, I'm going to set up a getter for each of the positions in the clock. The clock represents time in a base 10 system, so we have the hours 10 position, the hours 1 position, the minutes 10s, and so on. So that's how we convert all of the base 10 digits in a clock to binary. Now we just need to loop over them and show a column in the UI for each of the binary values. So in our stateful widget, we'll set up a container with a little bit of padding, then we'll set up a row, and this row will contain six clock columns. The clock column will be a custom stateless widget that we'll build next. Instead of creating a loop here, I'm just adding each of the clock columns manually so we can adjust the title, the color, and the number of rows that are actually displayed. And each column takes a different binary integer based on the value of the clock that it's meant to represent. Now each column will display four rows. So we'll go ahead and implement that logic in this stateless clock column widget. It will take a few input properties so we can customize the title, color, and things like that, as well as the binary integer that it represents. And one additional property called bits, which will just be an array of the values in the binary integer, which will contain four values of ones and zeros. Inside the build method, we'll go ahead and set up a column. We'll set the main axis alignment to space between, and then the first child of that column will be the title. Now the interesting part here is showing the active cells inside the column. We'll do that by looping over the four bits in the column. But one kind of annoying thing about Dart is that it does not allow us to access the index inside of a map operation. We can overcome this limitation by simply converting the list to a map, grabbing its entries, then we can set local variables for the value and the index. The cell is considered active if the bit equals one. If it's zero, then it's inactive. You'll also notice in the UI that each individual cell shows the base 10 value that that bit represents. So how do we convert a bit to a base 10 integer? Well, if you remember from earlier, it's simply a power of two. So we'll take the power of two and then raise it to three minus the index. We do three minus the index and not the index directly because we're actually looping in reverse here. We're starting with the highest value and then going down to the lowest value. So that should be all the computation we need for the UI. So at this point, we'll go ahead and return an animated container. And then we'll set the duration to around 500 milliseconds, just so we can animate the color when it goes from active to inactive. If we look at the box decoration for the container, you can see if it's active, we show the color that we passed as an input property. Otherwise, if the index is less than four minus the rows, then we'll go ahead and make that invisible by setting the opacity to zero. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and show a black or inactive cell. Then as the child of the animated container, we'll go ahead and show the actual binary value in base 10. 
and we'll give it some opacity just so it blends in with the existing cell color. Then down below the cells, I'll go ahead and use integer parse with a radix value of two. This will convert the binary integer to a decimal in base 10 format. And then down below that, we'll go ahead and show the binary integer itself in a smaller font size. And that's all there is to it. We now have a fully functional binary clock built with Flutter. My hope with this video is that someone watches it, builds their own clock in Flutter, and wins the competition. And there's some pretty decent prizes for the top entries. A thing to keep in mind is that the point of this competition is to build the UI for the Lenovo Smart Display. So a binary clock might not be exactly what they're going for, but here are a few other ideas that you might use to hopefully win this competition. One potential idea is to integrate text into your clock. So instead of showing the digits of 730, you would say it is half past 7. So you just need to write a little Dart algorithm that converts your timestamp into a human readable sentence. Another idea is to recreate the classic flip clock. This should be relatively easy to execute with Flutter animation and your own custom graphics. Also consider building a clock that adjusts its color gradient based on the time. So the color gradient will adjust every second, becoming darker at night and brighter during the day. Ultimately, I think the winning design will be something that is clean and modern that incorporates some animation. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io to get access to the full Flutter course and a bunch of other exclusive content. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.